Hey everybody, we uh, have a special tour tonight. We have the cast of Pearly here. Share this video. I'm trying to share this thing on my uh, on my page, guys. Uh, Lauren, see if you can yeah. put this on the uh, the tour uh, page. Um, so I'm I'm only going to ask this question of a few people that have never done torn because the ones who've done it, you know, already know the answer. And um, so I'm going to ask you. To, well, I'm going to ask everyone to introduce himself, but I'm, the first thing I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask Noah, Darius, Darion, and Marquise to tell me what your nationality is. So, Noah, you first. What is your nationality? I am unapologetically Black. Thank you very much. Okay, Darius, what is your nationality? African American. Um, Darion, what is your nationality? African American. Who? I'm a black African American. <laughs> oh, dear Father God. Marquis, what is your nationality? It's he did. African American. It's called African American. Okay. And then I, oh, wait, I got one other person that I want to ask that question to. Well, first of all, introduce yourself. We're going to do it from the screen. Um, st my starting next to me is, is, is Aya. Aya, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Aya. Um, Aya Wallace. And mm -hmm. I bring you greetings from. North Carolina City's dance studio. Um, and you need to know about me. That's it. That, that, that's, that's it for right now. We're going to tell you more later. Dylan, uh, your first and last name, I'm sorry. Dylan, to, to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Dylan Bailey, and um, I um, am, uh, that's me. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, this is all I need right now. Uh, Deb. I'm Deb Royals, bringing greetings from the Pure Life Theater company space itself. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Hooks. I am Darius Hooks, and I bring you greetings from my daughter's room. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Branch. Oh, I love it. I'm Shonda Branch, and I too am here at Pure Life Theater. I am in Studio B. Mm, okay, Mr. Anderson. My name is Noah Anderson, and I am coming to you live from Pembroke, North Carolina. Okay. Mr. Martin? I am Marquise Martin, and I am in Pure Life Theaters, Texas. Okay. Uh, Ms. Barber? Hello, I am Maria Barber, and I am at home at my <laughs> dining room table. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Hawkins? <laughs> hey, y'all. Uh, um, it's Darion Hawkins, and uh, peace and blessings and greetings all the way from Virginia. What's hey. up? Hey. <laughs> okay. And thank you. And one more person that I want to bring in. As I said, the, this is the cast of Pearly, and we are going to do Torn just like we do Torn normally. But I want to bring this person in as well and have this person introduce herself. <laughs> Don't scream in the lady's ear. <laughs> <laughs> She's connecting her audio. Shonda, breathe. Uh, breathe. Yes, it's connected. Shonda. Breathe, guys. Breathe. <laughs> so the reason why the Come reason on, why the guys are screaming, Shonda. the reason why the guys are screaming <laughs> is because they did not know. I'm gonna mute all of y'all. I'm gonna mute y'all. I'm gonna mute you too. Uh, uh, I'm gonna call you Auntie M. Auntie M. I'm gonna mute you too. They did not know she was going to be up here tonight. I did not tell them that that Miss Moore was going to be up here tonight. She Tell is me up here with her. Tonight. So, <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is a cast. Miss Moore, this is a cast of uh, Pearly that we, we will hopefully be doing it in February uh, here in Raleigh. And I'm going to have each of them reintroduce themselves to you and tell you what they will be doing in Pearly. And... Um, so I want to be a little different tonight. We are going to talk about what's going on, especially with this Brianna thing that's just happened. But uh, we are going to talk to Miss Moore as well. Miss Moore, how are you doing, first of all? Let me ask I'm you. I'm fantastic. Thank you. And you know what? Before, before I give the floor to them, you may not remember me, but I interviewed you back in 2003 at WXII in Winston-Salem. And my proof is you signed that for me. <laughs> You signed this for me. Where is that? Where's the signature? Right there. You signed that album for me. 
and you signed that album for me oh, back in two thousand. Yes, yes, RTM. Thank, I love you. Okay, all right. So <laughs> we're gonna uh, we're gonna introduce our uh, artistic director to you first. Deb, introduce yourself, please. Uh, well, I'm not the. Am yes, I you are. Go ahead. I, I'm not the artistic director. I'm a part of this beautiful theater company. I'm one of the. I'm a part of the core leadership, which includes just about everybody you see here um, in right here on the screen. Um, Aya is the director extraordinaire for this piece. And I'm so honored that you're here with us. Thank you so much. Hey, Joe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Aya Wallace. Aya, introduce uh, yourself, please. Oh, um, can I, I don't. <laughs> I hey, am, I mean, you know, use your words. I know, I know. So, um, Miss Miss Moore, I am Aya Wallace, and I will be directing Pearly. Um, that's going to be uh, produced and put on stage at Pearly at uh, Pure Life Theater. <laughs> so I'm the director. Okay, and um, Pearly, introduce yourself, sir, please. Um, hello, Miss Moore. I am Darius Hooks, and I will be playing the one and only Pearly. Good to okay, meet you. And I was, okay, I was going to say, I don't know what happened to Luda Bell, but she, she, a uh, camera messed up or something, <laughs> but she came back in. There she is right there. Introduce yourself, young lady. Luda Bell fashion. <laughs> I am Shonda Branch, and I will be playing Luda Bell Gus May Jenkins. And <laughs> I was so excited and nervous just now that I didn't have sense enough to plug my computer in the right way and it died. Oh. So that's what's happening inside my brain right now. Walk him up. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Well, I'm a uh, funeral service for the computer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, oh, I guess I need to introduce myself. Uh, Auntie M, I am Warren Isla. I will be playing Get Low uh, in the play. Uh, Dylan, go ahead. Um, my name is Dylan Bailey, and I'll be playing Charlie uh, in Pearly. And uh, it's such an I'm floored that you're here. I, I watched my face when you came on <laughs> this morning, and I, I, it just, there was no reaction. It was like I was just stunned. I don't know what I thought the surprise was going to be, but I, <laughs> I anticipate this. Uh, it's so nice to meet you. Good to meet right. you. Noah, 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 come back. Come, come Noah. back, Noah. Noah, come back. <laughs> Noah. Come on, come on. Y'all don't understand. Like, I just, like, really just, like, started as of, like, the past two and a half, like, at least month and a half, became a really diehard Melbourne Moore fan and following her on Instagram and seeing everything she posts and to finally just see her right now on Zoom in front of me. Uh, all of my theater friends are going to be so jealous. My mom is going to be so mad at me. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, I'm Can Noah. Can you introduce yourself? Thank you. Sorry. I'm, I'm Noah, uh, uh -huh. and I, I'm playing as part of the ensemble of for Pearly as well, and I'm really honored to meet you. Oh, my gosh. Yes. My pleasure. Thank too. you. Maria? <laughs> Hello, Ms. Melba Moore. This is Hi. so <laughs> exciting <laughs> to me. It's such a wonderful and uh, beautiful vocal powerhouse. Um, but again, I'm, I am Maria Barber, and I am a part of the ensemble, and I'm also a part of the Pure Life crew, helping with the marketing and all of that, trying to get the word out about this amazing show. So I'm so glad you're here. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> Marquise? I'm Marquise. Um, I am the assistant stage manager and also being with the set. <laughs> Very pleased okay. to meet you. <laughs> and why are you late? What do you see who we have in here and you're late? Miss <laughs> Moore is Miss Miss Melba Moore is here and you come up here with a do-rag on your head. <laughs> Introduce yourself to Miss Moore, please, sir. Your mic is I can't hear you. You know, we'll come back to you in a minute. I can't hear nothing you're saying. All right, we'll we'll continue our interview. Miss Miss Moore, we Juan, we, can um, I introduce myself? Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. <laughs> Help me. Help me. Um, Ms. Moore, uh, I'm Florence Van Haver from RDU on stage, and this is my Oprah moment. I get to surprise these amazing people who I adore so much, who have had so many wonderful conversations, and I'm just so grateful you're here. Um, so thank you for being here. 
pleased okay. to meet you. Can y'all yeah. hear me now? Oh, God, yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Introduce yourself to Miss Moore and, and tell her what you're doing in the play. Uh, hi, how you doing, Miss Moore? My name is Jamal Farrar. First off, let me just say that you are a legend, and I have listened to your music all of my life. Um, thank you for everything that you've done for music and everything uh, in my life. Um, and I am singing a tenor in the quartet in Pearl. Very pleased to meet you. Okay. Now I will continue with questions. I apologize. Apologizing for that, Lauren. Um, Ms. Moore, tell us how you uh, started, how you got started in theater. Theater? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. Hmm. Well, my first um, vocation was a public school music teacher, vocal music. And I loved it and I was good at it. I was able to pay my rent. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but my parents were performers and I kind of got into my DNA and I saw all the fun that they were having. So I said, well, daddy, that's your dream to be a school teacher. <laughs> it's not mine. Could you please be, introduce me to some of your, your colleagues and see if I can get into the industry? And he started taking me around. And one of the first people I met was Valerie Simpson. But she was trying to sell her songs, but she was also a studio singer. And so to make a long story a little shorter, we exchanged numbers. She asked me, could I read music? I said, read music, I teach music. <laughs> and so <laughs> I didn't say it like that, I swear. But um, <laughs> and if you did, that would have been fine too. <laughs> right, exactly. But I got started in studio work and uh, one of the recording sessions was for uh, Galt McDermott. He wrote the music for the Broadway musical Hair. And um, to make a story a little bit sh shorter again, they were still casting. And uh, so they invited all of the backup singers that were on that recording session to come down and sing for the director and the producer. And if we wanted to, we could be in, in hair. So that's how I got my first Broadway show. But one of the girls in the show reminded me that I did not know how to audition. And I had been in hair for almost a year and a half and that I should start just going up for auditions and learn how to audition. And uh, um, she she told me about auditions for the Broadway musical Pearly. And she told me that what I had to do is what they call typecast. You learn something about the character and you try to look like the character and sound like the character. And uh, I didn't study it, uh, acting, but my, my mother was a single parent. She was gone all the time. And the only person I really had in terms of my family was my grandmother who had strokes, she didn't speak. So I really don't know my family, but the one who raised me, the one I do know about was orphan, illiterate, a cotton chopper <laughs> from the backwoods of South Carolina. So I, that's how I talked about the time I was 10 years old. That's how I got Ludie Bell. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that dialect and, and that speed through talking. And, and so, cause you said, you know, your relatives, the relatives you got this from didn't speak. So where did you get the the, the voice and stuff from? I had a, a lady who raised me uh, while my mother was on the road singing and performing. Mm -hmm. And she's what we used to call a, a nanny or, or a, a, a governess. Mm -hmm. And she was illiterate. And she would mm -hmm. tell me um, uh, bedtime stories. Uh, and she told me about the Hank. Do you know what a Hank is? I'm dumb. Ludabell knows. <laughs> <laughs> What's the it's, hate? It's a ghost. Oh, it's a ghost. <laughs> oh, well, and the air that is at school right now says she got a hate somewhere yeah. in the building. <laughs> well, anyway, that, that was um, my upbringing. Of course, I was raised in uh, 108th Street. So, like most Americans, you have two cultures. You have wherever your, your original families uh, came from and mm -hmm. wherever you're from in, in America. So I was a New Yorker and uh, um, um, I guess, where was she from? North Carolina, I think. Back was North Carolina. She was a cotton chopper. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um, now tell me, what made you decide that you wanted to become a recording artist? From My mother. <laughs> Yeah, I was, you know what, and speaking of mother and father, now when you did hair, now we all know in hair, 
folk, unless I'm mistaken, folk had to come come clean a little bit in here. <laughs> come clean? If you know what I mean. Uh-huh. Clean, clean of this, of clothes. Is that not correct? We didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking questions. I'm just asking questions. Well, ask the question so I know what to answer. Okay. Okay, then. Well, in the beginning, <clears throat> during our previews, there, there was no new scene, but they kept coming up. They were very creative. First of all, a black lady played Abraham Lincoln. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. That, okay. You, you, you're very young, so you don't understand, like, really breaking the rules. <laughs> mm. Okay, yeah. You know, that's, that's gender, cool. everything, what, you know, whatever worked. And it was a comedy, but it was comment on society. And um, uh, what was your question? <laughs> what did your parents think of, did, did you have to get oh, nude? And oh, the new, the new scene, there's so many different things. I, I guess I, I kind of go back and focus. But during, during um, previews, <clears throat> they said that everybody had to do the nude scene, but then half the people were getting ready to quit because First of all, we were shocked, and that's not what we signed up for. But then they said, well, you can do it if you want to. And I said, but you know, I'm curious. And um, um, maybe about half the people stood up just to see what it was going to be like. And, of course, it, it, it was um, amazing. I guess because of the nature of it, it wasn't dirty or anything, but, you, I mean, it wasn't new. I mean, you don't, you don't, you don't stand up naked in front of strangers so it, on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't normal. We put it that way. So we were all, you know, really fascinated by it. And so it was the New York Times and the audiences. And of course, it became the, the, the very defining thing about hair. And I, maybe rightly so, because the new thing was one of many things that was just unusual, rule breaking, and just, I say, it's, it, it First on the scene. First of all, it didn't open in New York and then somewhere else. It opened around the world at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, many, 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 many stars came out of it. I mean, um, th th they broke all of the rules. I wound up replacing Diane Keaton. I was the first um, black lady uh, to replace a white lady in a lead role. I wasn't even no actress. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, I was then, but I mean. Right. Okay. Wow. Everything so, was like for the first time. It's kind of like this era. We, mm -hmm. These are unprecedented times. Mm -hmm. We'll probably be able to explain it better later. Mm -hmm. Lauren, go ahead and ask your question. Well, and I wanted to ask about you replacing Diane Keaton. Um, you, like you said, hair hair broke a lot of rules. Um, was a big deal made out of that at the time because you were replacing a white a white lead a white woman in that lead role? It was. Uh, um, I remember being on the front page of the entertainment section of the New York Times. Mm. So, and what is it? Well, well, it's, I, remember, I remember the headline. I don't remember too much, but it's, uh, and you, also, hmm? you also played Fontaine in oh, Les yes. Mis, which is yes. kind of a traditionally cast white role. So. Yes. Well, it used to be. I don't know how it is now. Oh, well, there's, a, there's no theater now, is there? No. No. Well, when they come back. When they come back. Okay, so, well, sorry, the, Juan. That was my question. Okay. okay. Well, the response is negative in the newspapers? No, it says okay. Melba Moore breaks. Uh, what is it? Uh, oh, oh, Melba Moore changes the color of hair. No, they were. I, I, I think you know once they got past not the New York Times, but mm -hmm. once people got past the, the new scene and understood that it was a piece, it was love, it was um, about let's you know be fair to one another. I mean, the jokes were hilarious, but it was really about let's, let's be one. And they, they caught the spirit of it, so, you know. Okay. Um, before I go on, does anybody else have any questions? Y'all just sitting there smiling. I, mean, I just want to say that, like, when I am riding down the street listening to the Broadway station on my Sirius XM, and you come on, it's like three, four times in a day that I'm hearing a Melba Moore song from a cast recording or from a cast album. 
and it just makes me so happy and I sing along with you inside my truck where nobody can hear it because I don't dare try to do your stuff <laughs> in public where anybody can hear me but I just it, it is tremendous to me that you have such a resume of just tremendous work, one right after the other, on these Broadway albums. And not many, many people can honestly say that all of their stuff was hitting like that. And I just appreciate you so much for the instrument that you have. Thank and you for very how, much. And for how your instrument, I heard you on an interview it couldn't have been maybe a year ago or something, but you were like, oh yeah, and I can still do it. And I was like, and then <laughs> you did it. And I was like, oh my God, she still got, it hasn't gone anywhere. Cause I had a vocal coach tell me you sing your first 20 years on guts. And then after that, you got to fall back on technique. And right. so you must, right. you must have both because he's right. Yes. It's still there. And just I just take, take care of it. It's yours too. Let me ask you this, um, when you, in the 70s, because it was, well, I want to say it was different than it is now, but I guess it kind of isn't after news of what happened today. Mm -hmm. um, did you experience um, racism in theater in the late 60s, early 70s? Ab absolutely. <clears throat> um, they, um, for Pearly, they actually, um, I guess, kind of, they didn't create a new category, but I probably was like the first black actress to receive the Tony Award in that category. Hmm. You know, hmm. we didn't just start being good in 1970, so. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, okay. Hmm. So it was, it was, and we had to move from several different theaters because we kept getting shut in, shut down because uh, um, Philip Rose, who was a producer, he's the one who brought um, Diane Sands, Diane Carroll, Sidney Forte to Broadway. He brought uh, Raising in the Sun. So he was responsible for opening up the doorway for Blacks, I and mean, Ossie Davis and Ruby Dee. And um, Ossie Davis wrote Pearly, Victorious, the straight, I would say, I mean, you know, the play without uh, music, the comedy. Mm -hmm. Because it was nothing for us. I'm stretching my eyeballs, excuse me. <laughs> so racism was rife. And <clears throat> what's going on now is the, the, um, the continual um, um, excellence of people, not just in talent, but in entrepreneurism, in politics, and in terms of theater. There is an organization called Women of Color in Broadway I mean, they're giving honors to people. I can't remember this young lady's name, but, but first of all, she's playing Tina Turner. Adrian Warren. I mean, okay, huh? What's her name? Adrian, Adrian. Warren. Okay. Yeah, she's incredible. I mean, she's one. <laughs> and first of all, that means she's acting. That ain't even how she is, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm amazed. Okay? That means she, I'm, I can, you know, tap my toe or something, but she, I mean, she's playing Tina Turner. I mean, she has to dance. Mm -hmm. That'll show you how strong not just ladies are, but people are, and not just Black people, but how strong the theater is and how strong America is and, and um, just how gifted we are. Mm -hmm. Well, not just um, us, but we too. We're not going to be excluded. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Um, what um, has happened today? Um, what are your thoughts on what's going on now um, with COVID and and where what is happening with theater and then the Brianna uh, Taylor situation? And as well, you see people here. And to me, it's a, it's a God thing. He's in charge of everything. And uh -huh. um, I think the reason I'm, I'm okay when any of us are is because we believe in Christ. If we're not Christians, then we believe in God. I, I can't tell people who to believe in. But somebody created all this. We didn't. <laughs> right. And I think we really have to focus in on what is... Um, our job to do as a citizen, um, how we can fellowship like you are doing with a wonderful theater company and, and uh, doing positive theater and opening the way and 
providing uh, um, opportunities for people who want to be artists <clears throat> or who want to be entrepreneurs. Or wh whatever it is, God is calling. He passed his presence in you. And so it's not going to be simple or easy. I was just reading in the scriptures today, something I've probably been reading a lot of times. Remember the scripture where the Lord uh, um, is baptized and then when he comes out, it's the Holy Spirit that leads him into the wilderness where he's tempted. I said, what? <laughs> said, yes, prepare you the way of the Lord. To me, that's what it's about. And it's not going to be easy. But this planet, this universe, this uh, galaxy is about who we are. We're creatures. Mm -hmm. And as charismatic as entertainment and music is, it's about more than that. But none of it is going to be here if we don't find out what the essence of life is, both in general and, and for true, and what it is for us. And we, we're connected. We are a community. God made it that way. Excuse me, in my humble opinion. <laughs> so, so we have to work it out. We don't have to, but if we don't, there is no chance. But if we do, we're going to be fine. It's not going to be easy. But we'll be all right. That's what I believe. Thank you. Um, so you've been on um, Buddha Records, Epic Records, Capitol Records. Um, do you think the music industry treated you as fairly as theater did? Or did theater treat you as fairly as the music industry did? Let me ask that question. To which, me, which was they're like really so totally different. Mm -hmm. And I think that music for Afrocentric people is um, an anointing. Okay. And um, theater and acting is part of who people are. Mm -hmm. But I think we have a special gift in regards to music. And I think music has a special place, place in the kingdom of heaven, whether it's on earth or where, wherever it is. And so the record industry, um, and maybe for most Black people too, uh, represents the, the first thing that we had to be able to express ourselves and expanding our community, music. Whatever, whatever our community had, was, if it was slavery, whatever it was. If we didn't have no beat, of course, you know we can create a beat, right? <laughs> right. God feels, I don't care where it is. But to me, that's the presence of God. And I think, to, to me, the recording industry is something that um, I consider the place where I could continue to develop as, as a singer, singing creature, um, then develop my style, and, um, and and then continue to adapt to all the different decades I've experienced now in this world and industry. <laughs> you can keep growing, you can keep trying. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, but for me, if that happens, I believe acting is gonna, acting opportunity is gonna continue to come out of that as well. Okay, um, I'm trying to think which one I want to ask first. Uh, is there any plans plans for you? Because see, when I interviewed you before, you and of course you probably couldn't tell me about it. It was right before uh, Fighting Temptations, and I was upset because you didn't mention Fighting Temptations to me, and I was mad because I had I saw it after you, after I interviewed you. I'm I'm sure you couldn't tell me about it, but it wasn't. I was like, why should you tell me about this? Because you did a, I I loved you in that movie. Um, yeah. So. Is there any plan for you to get back on the stage anytime soon? Oh, sure. There, are a lot, especially because I have this very, very, very successful single now. Once again, I feel like um, what the general pattern is, and that's why I keep following that. <clears throat> Even though I don't know what I'm doing, and I'm not the best entrepreneur in the world, uh, I will continue to have um, blessings in music and uh, theater pieces and books and other opportunities continue to come. You know, I've got a lot of things that are being offered down the pike now. And this new way of our um, doing virtual uh, interviews and stuff uh, opens up a lot of different, I'm gonna get, I don't know, I'm gonna get a show, as other people questions. What do they call it, a podcast? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, you wanna ask a question too, huh? Streaming. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, um, so my question was, um, with you being so active 
and doing so many shows. Um, how how did you find that balance of your stage life and home and home life? Like having that balance between your personal life and your work or your your gift. No balance, and so uh, lots of really horrible things happen. I made lots of mistakes, but the one thing that happened out of that is you find out you need Jesus, <laughs> mm-hmm. and so you continue to live out what, what am I, your destiny. I am destiny's child. <laughs> no, we are, but you keep searching. Do you know, you know what I'm saying? And then if you, if you survive it all the different problems that you have and you keep coming and you keep getting a chance to have a life and have a career and have have a, a passion. You continue to grow in common sense and, 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 and finding balances and finding out who you are and who, who people are and who, how you're gonna get along with people. You need people. So even if you bring in balance into your life, you have to figure out a way somehow. You need people. I don't know how to, how to describe it. It's just, it's very difficult. Um, Lauren, you want to ask? Uh, well, I have a, a follow-up question to that. I know um, you you have a daughter, um, and I think her name is Melba Charlie, right? And our Ludabel has a little girl, Carly, and and I'm kind of wondering, how did you balance mom life with your professional life? I know she was at the theater with you for Timbuktu. How how did, how did you balance? <laughs> well, for, a t- for a time, um, uh, my husband and I, it, it worked out because I probably because we're both crazy, but. <laughs> <laughs> and different members of our team and family uh, pitched in and helped us take care of her. But then it all fell apart and I lost her for a while. I have one daughter. I was homeless. Um, I didn't even have a bank account. But see, I, I, God is real. <laughs> uh, about two weeks before I was going to actually physically get evicted, a gentleman called me out on my first tour, actually, because I had... With all the uh, Broadway I'd done, I'd never been on tour. But, and this was, he created the gospel musical genre. Everybody thinks Tyler Perry did, but Michael Matthews is his name. And just when he called me out on the road, um, I got evicted. <laughs> and my daughter ran away. And my husband divorced me. <laughs> so, but so I'm laughing because, first of all, it was not only a gospel play, but they really were saved people. And so um, I was in grief and uh, um, they stayed with me. They prayed with me. And as what we would call, some of you might know what we call chitlin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, basically that means they pay you cash. <laughs> so now I'm homeless. I didn't even got a bank account, right? And this gentleman pays me $7,000 in cash every week which means I got to find a whole lot of brown paper bags and things, you know, so to my clothes and everything. I ain't got no bank account. So I have to figure out a new, what they teach me how to take care of my, of course, you know, he showed me how to, because it comes from the box office. They don't do checks and stuff like that. That's not chitlin, okay? <laughs> they told me how to, you know, get money orders at the post office and uh, make sure that I had security people to, so I didn't get robbed and stuff. But it was a whole new way of living. But I can't say that it was balanced. It's just amazing. And you see that, uh, I guess, the essence of what, what life is. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I didn't realize I was saved. Mm-hmm. But you know, the first time I, dis- I discovered it, and that these people were that was the first day of rehearsal. I remember the young lady's name was Dita. She said, good morning, saints. Praise the Lord, everybody. I said, oh my God, did I die? Because I'm used to people hearing curse, you know, cursing and swearing. (laughs) (laughs) It cussed me out because I want to go to church. 
So, I mean, the whole experience was so bizarre, but you can't call that balanced or, or anything that's logical. It's just quite amazing. I, I, I do have another question. Thank you for sharing that with us though. But um, of course you won the Tony for Pearly. You've been nominated for many Grammys, been in film, television. The Oscars just announced a new diversity requirement for its best picture nominees starting in the year 2024. What do you think this is going to mean for the entertainment industry? And do you think that the Tony Awards will follow suit? Because they're a little white as well, <laughs> just like the Oscars. Well, can I ask you a question? What does that mean? Uh, a, a diversity requirement? Is it what you said? Yeah. Um, the American Motion Picture Association is going to... Um, require that the best picture nominees, I should have found the wording before we went on air, but that they have um, representation and inclusion. In, oh, oh. In, in, right, Juan, do you know about this? I sure don't. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, um, well, it's a, diver it's a new diversity requirement that the Oscars just put place for its best picture nominees starting in the year 2024. And I'm kind of wondering if other award shows are going to um, follow suit. I don't know that this is um, necessarily something the music industry needs, but maybe the Tony Awards, I don't know. I, 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 I can't um, admit to being politically correct in anything. I've never really quite understood the politics, even though th things have worked for me, it seems like a good thing to do, mm -hmm. to, to attempt to make things fair. It seems like a good thing to do. Absolutely. And they've been criticized. Oscars have been criticized um, often, um, <laughs> often for being too white. So oh. anyway, um, so Juan, I will turn I'm, I'm sure I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you knew that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, okay. I'm I'm actually looking it up now. It's requirements. They need to have two of the four, two of these four requirements. They have to have an Asian Hispanic actor. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, women, LGBTQ plus, black. Okay. Yep. They have to have some one of those requirements. Ooh, I I can see a lot of pushback from that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's that whole affirmative action thing. Um, hmm, wow. Anybody else, anybody else have any questions? Because the cat, Auntie, Auntie, hold on, Auntie M. It, it, it was the it was the roughest thing for me to get this cast up here because I was I couldn't tell them you were coming, and they was like, oh, I can't do it, and I was like, Okay, fine then. And it was just it was just <laughs> rough. I'm not to tell them that you were coming. And they were just giving me all kinds of grief. And I'm like, y'all better be up there. You don't know what you're going to miss. But OK, Chanda, what you want? What you want to ask? Go ahead. My question is about um, when you were in rehearsal for Pearly, did you have any idea where it was going, how, what it was going to blossom into, and what it was going to mean to little black girls like me who were going to come along, Aww. weren't even going to be born until 1983 to discover this? And go. Oh wait, that I can I can do that too. Mm -hmm. Did you have any idea when when you were in the development where this was going? No. First of all, I didn't know how to read a script, so I thought it was what we used to call um. um. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I said, I don't know black people come to see these things, so I I mean, and, and that made sense, yeah. but I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was trying to figure out what is stage left and stage right. <laughs> Don't worry, I, really, I, I, I really was scared a lot because once I realized I'd gotten the part and this was serious theater and I, you know, couldn't, be, I had to be, whoever it was they were telling me to be, I had to be this, I had to live up to this and be that and it was a role and it, it was serious. 
So I was really scared. I didn't know what the Tony Awards were. Mm -hmm. Y'all know who George Faison is, right? Mm -hmm. Well, um, yeah. this, this, I don't know. Yeah. this is before the whiz. <laughs> so, <laughs> he was in the dance chorus. He was a dancer. And we became friends and he explained to me what the Tony Awards were and that I had to dress up for it. Matter of fact, he made, he, he made my dress because he was doing sewing on the side. So don't ask me nothing about political correctness. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have a moment later, I would love to know about some of your fashion choices through the years, because if we just skim through the album covers, mm -hmm. you have done it all. And I love it. Thank you. I have, I have a question or perhaps an invitation. If we're able to do Pearly in February and we can make a way and you're able, will you please come and be with us? I would be so delighted. Oh my gosh, yes. And if we, and we may have to move it again, depending on what happens. Well, everybody's doing that. It's okay. It would be, you know, certainly priority for me to try to so be a part of it. An open come and invitation. see you. Oh, yeah. thank you so much. We would love thank that. You. Thank well, you. Well, you just made my job easier. Now I can ask y'all to do things and you're going to do them as I ask. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. Because you want it to be wonderful and beautiful from this Melba Moore, right? You do that anyway, Ayo. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time. Well, and, and one other thing. So Reverend Barber, when we first started up our theater company back in January, because we've all been together for many years and we decided because we love and respect each other so much we were going to do this and reverend barber is a good friend to many of us and he actually came and blessed oh the theater so we Wonderful. are right there with you when we pray <laughs> before and after and we give uh, mm -hmm. uh god the glory we do. We only, we only well, we're gonna be all right then yes lord <laughs> <laughs> Can I get back to my interview now, Cherry? <laughs> yes, sir. I got a question. Yeah, I couldn't help it. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Anne. So, as, as being from the perspective of a director, how yes. how did um, Rose? How was that as the director? How was he? And how was how was that experience? <laughs> well, Philip was wonderful, and uh, he'd done so many different. Well, he'd opened the way for Black people in theater. But he used, he, he says, he took me to Sardis and he sat me down and he says, Melba, how do you talk like that? <laughs> 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 because sometimes I probably would drop so deeply into it, you wouldn't understand the, the dialect. And not being an actor, it didn't concern me that you didn't understand what the heck I was even saying. You know, I didn't, yeah. I didn't get that. <laughs> but uh, um, Philip, and, and then uh, uh, my husband talked him into putting it on tape otherwise, because the, what you see on tape was like 10 years after Pearlie. That was mm. gonna be my question. Mm -hmm. And I think still it's really way ahead of his time. Now, only thing that I know that's on tape at the play is Hamilton. There may be some others, but it's, it's not done too often yet. Mm -hmm. So we were, in other words, we, we don't know. We're just trying to hear what should we do? What we can do? You know, well, that's good. Let's try that. You know, and, and just keep trying and do our best and an open way for other people as we go. Because I have no clue what I'm doing, but other people have been so good and kind to me. That's good. I have one more one. I'm sorry. Can I ask? You? Mm -hmm. So, um, in the um, in the the clip that we saw where you were singing, I got love. I won't sing because you sung it. <laughs> oh no! Come on, you can sing it. <laughs> and um, were, so do you remember like what you were thinking? Were you thinking, am I, were you thinking about the song or were you thinking about yourself as the character singing the song? Both. Both. And I'm thinking, uh, um, what's going on? Because that song wasn't in the show. Mm -hmm. Because like I said, they didn't hear me sing. They didn't even know I could sing. And very often musicals were done um, by people who didn't necessarily sing very well. They acted and they acted it out. And that, that was fine with many people. But the lady who was, <laughs> she was extraordinary too, was the, um, the, the uh, orchestra leader. 
first of all, she was a lady, and second of all, she was black, but third of all, she had been the uh, conductor uh, for the Broadway musical Hair. She said, you know, you don't really ought to hear her sing. <laughs> 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 so I went out for as long as she can do the part. And of course, I was trying to learn how to act. I was trying to learn how, to, excuse me, not even act, audition. Mm. Did I tell you anything? I'm sorry. No, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so my question, because the... Um, Dylan has the, a question the, on. Oh, I'm sorry. Dylan, Dylan, go ahead. I'll make mine quick. Um, uh, Ms. Moore, where does your energy come from and how do you sustain that energy um, when doing eight shows a week on Broadway or something like that in an extended run? I mean, and, and we've seen clips where you were just throwing your whole self into it and committing so fully. Where does that energy come from? Well, I can't eat everything. I'm very delicate. I live a very, 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 very disciplined life. I think I have a heart of a dancer, just not the feet, okay? <laughs> but I mean, oh. I'm, I'm, I, I adore it, what I do. I'm so excited and scared about every performance. And so I, I, just, I just magnify everything. <laughs> and um, it, it's still extremely exciting to me and I'm grateful for it. And uh, I, I just seem to naturally, I want, to, I want the best for every moment. And you know what? Now that he said that, you, I'm going to be totally honest. Let me see. Just so the people at home that are watching. Oh, I need some uh, new eyes. Um, what year was this? This was 79. Y'all yeah. look at this. Look down at her. Look at her face and look at this. This was 82. Look at this and look at her face. What What are you drinking? What, what, are, you, what are you drinking? Holy what? Right. Mm. Not far mm. off. Better drink the holy water, cause uh. No, but he he tell you what to eat. Mm. And uh, now that I'm a senior citizen, actually, in Jesus, I'm a new preacher. Mm. And what you're telling me is you really see that. Mm. Mm. Yes. Ain't okay. no work, so I can't afford no surgery. <laughs> 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 All right, now tell it, tell it. You're right, they ain't, ain't, you know, ain't nobody working right now. But look, I was okay, so, early. Um, the video we saw was put out in 1981. Yeah. Um, and the original was 70, right? 70, yeah. 71, 70. Um, and I know that there's, there's a different cast for 81. Right. Not completely, but some of the cast was different. Yep. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm getting nosy now. Which did you like better, the 70 cast or the 81 cast? Mm -hmm. The shade. The shade of it all. You know, I ain't going there. <laughs> okay. Well, half but, of them ain't hitting no more, so it's a... Well, I tell you, one of my favorites, though, was Sherman Hensley. Yes. I love Get Low. I, I love the Get Low you did. Yes. Now, first of all, I mean, he wouldn't mind me saying it, but he was always high. Literally or figuratively? <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, so wait, now wait, wait, we know what pause. we need to do for you. <laughs> press pause, press pause. You, you just Auntie M. Oh, hold on, Auntie M. <laughs> <laughs> you really Auntie M right now. You really, you sitting here telling me you don't want to tell me which group was better, the 70 or the 81, but you don't sit here and tell me the man was high. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead okay. and talk, Auntie M. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so it was like, really, I mean, I could say I had fun with Pearly. But a lot mm -hmm. of times, it was hard for me to keep my character because he was always doing something to crack me up. <laughs> That's all and, like and I know what to look for. <laughs> and, yes. you know, um, that's part, I guess, of theater people becoming a family, you know. Mm -hmm. Nobody else knows. I don't know, you know. It doesn't matter anybody else, but I'm telling you what meant so much to us, really, not just to me. Mm -hmm. And why mm -hmm. we stayed friends and, you know, and he went on to be, but the same thing was true of Novella Nelson, who, who did the uh, the Broadway version. We be, and of course, she told me what was stage left and stage right. 
<laughs> but uh, uh, also, I think she introduced me to Clifton Davis. Ooh, your first, uh, can I tell yeah, you? Yeah, my, my first Aurora. Your first Aurora, your first financier. Uh-huh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Et cetera. Et cetera, ETC, yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna say everything, but you know. Uh-huh, I mean, I just, <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, but, but uh, important things when we were well, well, having a, a TV show, mm -hmm. you know, they came out of that relationship. It's just, as I'm, I'm saying, you know, I, I can't think in terms of which cast I like better. Just mm -hmm. some some relationships that happened and, and uh, really influenced our lives. Mm -hmm. um, well, thank you for telling me what you just told me because Aya and Shonda and who else up here? Hey, and Shonda don't like when I go off script, and I'm subject to go off script in the middle of a play. You got right. I don't like it because you mm -hmm. take us with you. <laughs> well, I took him with me, so, <laughs> so Shonda, you can get him back if he takes you. You can get him back. Auntie <laughs> him. We were Auntie him. We were doing a play, and she had a wig on. Hey, I had a wig on, and in the middle of the play, she took the wig off. I ain't know my next line. I just lost it. I ain't know what to do. I know what <laughs> a little bit, huh? <laughs> I, I completely lost it. I and, and said it. I said I don't even know what to do no more. I'm, I'm done. I'm 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 out. So I had been getting for the whole play, and she yeah, she got me back. Um, so um, anybody else? Anybody get, got anything? Because yeah, we ain't, we ain't really torn in right now. Um, and and I'm fine with it. I'm not upset about it. Um, you got any questions for us, Auntie M? About what we do. Well, what are you? What are you? What's the right question? Um, did it all shut down at once for you? Were you in the middle of anything? Were you on all the other projects? Or we actually go ahead, Anne. Um, well, for Pure Life Theater, we were doing Loving, the show Loving. And I remember um, we were doing the show the last weekend, I believe. Then people were starting to worry about, you know, how do you catch this this thing? Because it was coming out. Um, it wasn't as like in our face, but we were a little weary of it. And I re remember somebody coughing in the um, in the audience, and I like I was still in character, but I was still thinking to myself, is that coming my way? Am I bringing in? So um, that I. We, we and then, but that was our last weekend. Um, we oh, just praise the love for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um. So you know. I'm, well, you know, and Mr. Cuomo, because uh, uh, Mr. Trump would have still had you all out there. <laughs> Dying. Oh. Yeah. Dying. Excuse me. Yeah. Was that political? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> it's fine. It's true. It's fine. That's what it, we do. There's, here. Po there's politics and truth. <laughs> right. But we yeah. um, and then we have you know had to transition um, from being on stage to coming to this virtual world, um, and I believe our community and not just pure life theater, but our whole entire theater community was able to um, be creative um, and you know finding ways to fund our theaters. Oh, there you go. Little virtual um, fundraisers and finding ways to present theater, you know, virtually. And wow. that's how Torn came about um, because uh, Lauren was doing RDU on stage. She does her usual thing and um, brought it to, you know, the virtual world. And then Juan came up with the idea, actually Torn was before COVID, but um, he was able to bring that and bring it along and attach it. And here we are today. We are still you, you, you really have to want to do what you do and create new ways and new ways of thinking. And you, you have to catch yourself because we're creatures of habit. We, I mean, that's not a bad thing, but uh, <clears throat> that's not there now. So now what do you do? It has to come from you because this, is, this belongs to you. You're in charge of it. Amen. So it's it's quite amazing. I think you find out um, not just who you are, but that you're creatures. We're living creatures. What amazes me sometimes too 
is sometimes, you know, because you in an industry or where you you have access to view so many people and you realize just millions of people all to be secretaries. I'm amazed at that, you know, <laughs> singers. And we really, I'm, one of the things I look at, I guess, or I'm, I'm shown by the Lord is that, yes, you're my creatures. <laughs> Mm. and it, the thing that's, that seems to help especially as I'm getting older is that to know that and to study that and to focus on that gives me my help and makes it, uh, makes it easy for me to not disjoint it and disconnect it from the rest of our human uh, family which is it can be very very destructive because we're 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 our human, we are a family. He made it that way. And when you discover those things and keep feeding in those things, you, I think you get creative and you continue to rediscover as well as reinvent yourself. And you find out you're quite amazing creatures. What are you all going to be? <laughs> Thank you. Y'all got, y'all got, got theater. <laughs> <laughs> Auntie M, you 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 said earlier, and I'm I'm it's still on my mind um, that you were evicted. Your daughter had left. Your marriage was over. Um, but you went and did a play, and I mean that, and you had to get into character to do that play. You had to pretend to be someone else. After the verdict today. I was in tears. Mm -hmm. I wanted to give up. I was tired. Yes. I was yes. done. I'm, I'm almost in tears now. I was just right. like, when right. is it going to end? When is it going right. to stop? Right. Right. I, how do I keep going? Right. How, and you're telling me with all that, you kept going. No, but what I told you is that God dropped me in the middle of people Sometimes I couldn't even speak. Mm. I remember one of my little friends, she would just, I would cry thinking about it. She would just stay with me because I couldn't even say nothing. I was so broken. It would do that to you. You can't do nothing for yourself. God has to do it. He's put you someplace with people and, and, and let them talk for you. Some can't even talk. You're so grief stricken, you can't even talk. And then I, I'll skip to something else there because this is so, going to be so dear to me that I don't know roll with them and everything and um, keep, keep trying to find out how to contact my daughter. Mm -hmm. And I bring her out there with me. And she's been through hell. She can't even talk either. You know, she's just so much has happened to her. And she comes in, they embrace her, and they said, Oh, Charlene. And she, everybody, how about praise the Lord, everybody? You know, she said, Mom, they're so sweet. And she's almost in tears, right? I said, Honey, that's what saints do. <laughs> that's what happens. Because the devil means it to kill you before your time. That's how serious it is. You can't survive this. It will destroy you before your time. You're not wrong to feel that way, to, to see how horrible it is. You're not wrong. Only thing is, you're in the midst of wholeness here. I can say, you'll be all right, all right. I'm skipping to the chase, but that's the process. Uh, and you, you, you um, got to go and grieve. You can't let this pass by. There's much, much, much more loss than just one person's life, even or somebody lying. It's eating a hole in in our in our community, in our society, and in, in in our ability just to just to, just to live. Of course, all this has has. Uh, uh, um, culminated into a pandemic where everything is stopped and it's global. Little by little. And one good healthy thing 
is to wherever you can stop and grieve because the grief brings it to your attention. So you can see what even the heck it is. To try to start to deal with it. You can't unless, you, you know, it devastates you to the point where you're, you, you're stopped. And of course, you, you already know you got to get up, but you got to stop. There is no other way. I mean, unless something happens where you, you're not able to and you've got to keep going, and that's the way the, the, the circumstances have taken you. But it looks like God just done stop while well, we've stopped. We didn't do it right. Everything is stopped. And I think it's his mercy that allows us to grieve, that allows us to mm. see, see it and, and see how horrible things are in different areas and do whatever we can to take some little piece of, of humanity and love and nurture it. How, how powerful and, and important each little grain of uh, humanity is. And that's, that's true. We, we all know that. That's true. Thank you. Uh, my mom always watches. She asked a question. I always get my mom's question. She wanted to know from each of the panelists, um, how has uh, the corona affected you guys acting wise uh, since, you know, since March? So, uh, Dylan, what have, what have you been doing acting wise since corona? I'm, I'm doing, um, you know, I wear a bunch of different hats um, in theater, and so I, I do do other things outside of just acting. I do marketing for some theaters, and I do um, sometimes I do tech theater as well. Um, what um, an administrative! I'm on the board of directors with Seed Art Share, and um, so so it's admin work as well. What I'm finding is um, in the time of COVID, it's three times as much planning to make anything happen. And a lot of times there has to be a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C, and going back to the drawing board. So anything is more challenging to put into action right now. So um, time just kind of goes through the hourglass um, with um, really quickly. Um, I've been doing some virtual acting. I um, worked on Burning Coal, did a parking lot play called Celine and the Dream Eater in, I think that was June. Um, that I worked on as a puppeteer. Um, and right now I'm working with um, several of the people that are on this Zoom screen um, uh, with Pure Life Theater's The Comedy of Errors, which we're gonna be doing on our open air stage um, this Saturday um, at 8 p.m. So that I'm staying busy. Um, there's not as much money in theater right now. Um, there's just as much work though. Um, uh, but the work is important because if we don't do the work now, there won't be work later and, and no so, money later <laughs> amen. yes um so it, we're fighting now to make sure that there's money later um, so that's that's what my experience is thank you lauren what are you doing as if i don't know yeah are you uh, turn your mic on your mic ain't on she like she ain't never been on zoom before <laughs> producer of torn i'm usually lurking invisible <laughs> in the background <laughs> that's why i wanted you to talk most of the people don't that, that watch torn and watch these other things that are on rd rd on stage don't really get to see you a lot so i want you to tell people what you did especially since i forgot you in the beginning lord have mercy <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, we've we got podcasts coming up. Um, we have some good podcasts coming up. Um, audio podcasts that'll drop on Apple and Spotify and different places. And um, I'm just keeping busy. I'm doing interviews. I'm trying to uh, keep keep talking about the theater until they let me back into a theater <laughs> to see something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to, you know, finally they're going to have to do something to let me back in. So I just stopped yapping about it. But I, mm -hmm. I, um, I'm, I'm just keeping on, keeping on, you know, doing interviews, lots of interviews. I don't know that this is a time to review theater because everybody's making it up as they go along and figuring out this 
virtual world. It's almost like everybody's starting over. So I'm not sure that this is a great time to be reviewing theater, but I think it's a great time to be talking about theater and, and keeping um, the focus on our artists, especially our local artists and our local theaters who really um, need help right now. So support local artists, support local theater, and buy Melba's amazing records and discs because that's what I was like. I was dancing during dinner. I texted Juan. I was like, I am dancing in my kitchen. I can't wait. <laughs> you, stepped into, you stepped into my life as playing. I'm like, oh Lord, there she go. <laughs> All right. Sonda, what's going on with you? Um, I am doing what um many actresses are doing. Um, there is a lot of work right now for readings. Um, playwrights who have created things and they want to just sort of hear it come out of somebody else's mouth instead of their own head. Um, and it's safe to do that in a Zoom format. Or if you have just three people in the cast, you can space yourselves out and, and read through a piece. Um, I am going to be on stage with Dylan in a comedy of errors on Saturday at eight. Um, just Dylan, just Dylan. And Juan. And, uh, and Deb. <laughs> <laughs> and a few other friends. We, it, it, and, and that really was birthed from a place of we have just been starved. Mm -hmm. Um, Ms. Moore has talked extensively about the family, the community that theater brings and provides and the, the peace and the joy. This is my escape. I know a lot of people who know that I have a full-time job and y'all, my baby is gonna be two on Friday. I can't I don't know how it happened. Carly, no. two on Friday. I have an almost two year old mm. um, and, and my husband and all of the responsibilities at home and I've got a lot going on, but I carved this space out because this is my place of peace. This is where I am most fully and most freely myself. And if that goes away, then all the other things just sort of drop out of the sky and don't make any sense. Um, so being able to return somewhat to the stage, it's a reading, but I get to dress up and I get to have a glass of wine in one hand and my script in the other. And we're going to get on the stage and have fun. And, you know, anybody who wants to come see it can come see it. Um, a very low pressure, high fun situation. Um, I'm, I'm starting to get commercial work. Thank you, Jesus. So, you know, being able to go in and shoot for an hour and come on out and, and get paid. Um, I'm liking the sound of that. Um, but I just really am looking forward to all of the doors that COVID has opened. A lot of people have not seen the blessings in disguise. Mm. Uh, and I think that all of the new things that have come about and that we are, as Dylan said, we're planning and rehearsing and, and getting these things sort of laid out. Once we have them figured out, I don't mm. think they're going to go completely away. And I don't think that they should. I think that offers a new space to be able to mm -hmm. do that in addition to what we have traditionally done right. on stage. And so I'm really excited that we are able to kind of refine these processes so that they won't be difficult and we'll be able to just sort of layer those in when we can get back together in our space and do what we love doing. So. Ding, 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 thank you. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what are you, what are you, what are you doing? I'm delicate too, Miss Moore. <laughs> she is. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here with my theater family. I mean, I have three boys, they're older. Um, it's given us a lot of space and time to um, think about the things that needed to be fixed and corrected here in our theater home that we are so fortunate and blessed to have, um, clean it up, organize, get it ready, dream about ways to bring theater in new and different ways virtually to people. And, and like Shonda said, I, I just had an interview um, for on a radio station earlier today and it's 
those things won't go away and they make theater accessible to folks who can't get out. So I think that we're gonna have a combination of live and virtual. Um, my, I always say this, and I said it on the radio today, so I'm gonna say it again. My good friend, Vincent Drayton, was at my house the weekend that um, everything was just about to blow open in March, and he said, there's a silver lining in this. <laughs> Look at that silver lining God's holding out there mm. and see it, experience it, embrace it. Um, so um, I try to think about that. You know, there is, it's, if anything, it's made this family of us who have, we are so tightly tethered to one another mm -hmm. and we love each other so much. Like I can have thoughts about something and Aya will call me and it's the thought that was in my head. And I am so beyond grateful for that for the rest of our lives. We have these incredible friendships that are like mm -hmm. family mm -hmm. ties. So. Yay. Auntie M, Auntie mm -hmm. M, I don't like none of these people. <laughs> <laughs> he lying, he lying. <laughs> he lying. He lying again. <laughs> And I don't know, Shonda, I, sh I don't know how she's forgetting people because Marquise and Jamal are going to be on the stage with, with us on Saturday. How she, she thinks she's going to be right. on the stage? Right. Okay, so I think Miss Melba Moore might be the only person on this call who's not going to be on stage with us. The college kid. Next person, Darius. The next person on my list is Darius. What, Darius, what, what have you been, have you been doing anything with theater? Because you just abandoned You don't even know who you are no more. On that one, but no, I really I haven't been doing um, too much, but uh, just staying. I mean, singing in my church choir, and I did do back in July. I did do a web series um, that was written by Tia, Tia Talia Brian out of Atlanta, and it was called The Perfect Date um, with some of our cohorts like Christopher um, and um, Rodney. So I did do that, but I really haven't been doing much. Just staying back, waiting on uh, opportunities um, to come. And now this is my family too. So I'm ready to get back with you all and start cutting up too. So that's about <laughs> it. Yes, I'm glad he's, he's back life. home. You probably don't remember <laughs> it, but he saved my life. I was going up a real tall, long set of stairs. I had never seen this man before in my life. Oh, and yeah. my foot got hung up. <laughs> between a step oh. and the skirt and mm -hmm. all be bad and oh. the arm came out of nowhere and we've mm. been we've been tight ever since there you go and i, I want understand to say that to, and i want to say to shonda I, it seems like i haven't seen carly in about a long time she's here. She's exactly. here out here with my mama and my sister oh okay <laughs> all right so uh next on my list is marquise um so I've just been, I recently got a job at Route 21. Um, I'm an assistant manager there. And then I've also been working on um, just re, how do I say this? Fixing everything that needs to be fixed in the theater and yeah. helping get it cleaned up and organized. <laughs> I was going to say, boy, if you don't tell everything that you do in the theater, <laughs> Auntie M, Auntie M. What's that like big sign behind um, Shonda and Deb? What is that big sign? What is that? What did you do, Marquise? Right. What did you do with that sign, Marquise? Okay. So that sign behind them, that is um, from an event I, me and my best friend had planned. Um, it's called That's Dope. And dope stands for demonstrating our people's excellence. So basically, that was a um, Black Business Expo that um we um that we invited local black businesses small black businesses to come and sell their products and be able to like network and get their names out there also there you go thank you look at carly <laughs> uh, <Auntie> M. <laughs> you know, Shonda's daughter Shonda has a daughter up there can you say hi they're all waving at you tell everybody hey, carly. <laughs> Hey, Carly. Hey, Carly. Hey. Oh, I see you want to be bashful. I see you are uh, patting. Are you all right? Hey. Hey. Um, oh. So, 
<laughs> I was looking kind of greasy, so I thought. Mm. But that's that's. I think that's the secret to you know, staying looking okay. You know, don't wrinkle mm -hmm. up too bad. I got so much grease. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna continue on. We're gonna be quick, y'all. Don't say up, y'all. Mel, uh, uh, Mar uh, Maria, what's your name, Maria? What have you been doing? <laughs> don't act like you don't know my name, Juan. <laughs> well, I have not been doing much as far as um, working as an actress. Um, I am working on a couple of projects on my own outside of theater related to music and writing and different things like that. Um, but I'm enjoying doing behind the scenes work as far as um, helping to plan Peel Life Theater events and get the flyers done and um, just whatever is needed, I try to be there. I, I'm kind of enjoying not being on stage. Well, I was enjoying it until last month. Now I'm ready <laughs> to learn some lines and some music, maybe a tad bit of choreography, mm -hmm. just a tad, Aya, just yeah. a tad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't understand. I don't understand what, um, what tad is. I don't understand. <laughs> But um, I, I will say because of COVID, I felt like my whole life got snatched up mm -hmm. um, because I was so heavily involved um, with theater um, because it's just me. So I just had work in theater. That was all that I was doing. So I really needed to stop and take some time to really look at some other dreams and goals that I had. So I'm grateful, you know, that I had the opportunity to do that. So, mm -hmm. but I am looking forward to getting back on stage. And of course I will see y'all on Saturday because I'll be managing the house. I do mm -hmm. house management work. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about that. Um, socially distant, of course. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Hey, yeah. Um, so, uh, been working with Pure Life, getting um, our um, pearly master class behind the curtain um, on its legs. Um, I have been assisting in fundraisers, so doing a lot of virtual singing. Um, have uh, directed or am directing um, Edgar Allan Poe's, um, oh gosh, The Pit and the Pendulum. It's gonna be an audio reading. Um, Jesse Geffart, I always say. It's going to be um, doing that, and um, we're also going to have uh, sound design. Um, Ariana's doing that, and we're all excited. Like, I'm excited because um, one of the things that a lot of people don't know about me is that I love Bram Stoker's um, Dracula, the um, soundtrack. Um, I used to listen to it as a little girl. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> um, and we just connected and that's gonna, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Um, also, I just did a video for someone like Shonda just did a video for um, elections to, for Durham so that they know that they can um, vote safely. So that's on the um, election site for Durham. Um, and then I'm mom. So of a 16 year old um, and he's a basketball player. So I've been going to- um, safely distanced, um, <laughs> uh, what are they called? Tournaments. So mm. at South Carolina, several times over the weekend, mm. being able to watch him play and do a little film editing, you know, getting his highlights together. So yeah, that's what I am. And then here I am at Central. This is my second week um, doing what we call hybrid. So on Mondays, I have part of my class. And on Wednesdays, I have part of my class. Um, so, and then do the rest of the class virtually. So here we are. But sis, teach them what, what you teach. What you teach at Central, sis? I am a brown ballerina. So I am the uh, ballet teacher oh. at North Carolina Central okay. University. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, come on. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, for COVID, during COVID, I've just been take an inventory of my life. And um, one thing I can say about COVID, what it's done for me is to make me appreciate the little things, uh, things that I took for granted, like 
going to the store or, you know, spending time with the kids outside of the house, those things, um, I started to focus more on those things, uh, which in turn led me to start back to focus on things about myself. Um, I, I am still doing a little work, um, more writing and directing. Uh, matter of fact, this week I got uh, an, uh, Someone called me about doing uh, directing, writing and directing a film uh, out of L.A. So between L.A., Las Vegas and North Carolina, um, I'm supposed to be doing this, d directing uh, a couple of films. He asked me to do two films, actually. And I'll still um, be doing theater work. Um, I'm in Comedy of Errors with uh, the cast, uh, Shakespeare. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Um, oh, I hopefully if. All is well. I will be making my directorial debut in 2021, directing my first stage play. And so I'm excited. I'm super, super excited about that. But that's it. Is there Darion? Hello. Hey. Oh, hey, y'all. OK, so um, COVID. COVID, first, OK, first of all, COVID came at the most inopportune, opportune time. I was in the process of getting ready to go on tour for Aida, the opera. And thankfully, not thankfully, it kind of came and made that go away because, okay, no, no. I like the opera, it's really fun. But we were doing the chorus line and the tour of Aida was going to cross paths with the audition time frame, So I wouldn't have got to audition and get cast as Richie and Chorus Line. So that was kind of fun and thankful that that happened. And then, you know, Chorus Line happened and it was like, we're gonna do it and we're gonna be rehearsing virtually. And then, you know, when the time comes, we'll be able to be, get a tech week in and do it live and COVID's gonna go away. Psych. So <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm a movie star because we filmed it, basically movie star, movie magic and made that happen. So that was the highlight of my coronavirus COVID situation. So I'm thankful for that experience, opportunity to be able to dabble in film work. That was kind of fun. Um, outside of that, it's my last on stage situation. I've been doing a lot of behind the scenes stuff. I'm production managing for Pearly, so I'm excited. I have- I'm <laughs> He is the bomb. <laughs> I'm doing the lights, the sound stuff a little bit, and some production work on this show from special effects. I can't tell you guys about yet, but you know, when the show comes, you'll see it. I don't have my own initials on it. It's this whole process of doing it first virtually, but like, I want to be there and do like, let me virtual and show you guys what I'm doing in the theater from the theater, but you know, it's a long drive there and back every day but we're going to make it work. And just the, the, the chance to take a, take a production and strip it down to nothing from what its original production value was, up it, and just raise the spectacle of the whole thing and translate it to how things are happening in today's society mm -hmm. is going to be the highlight of year 26 going to 27. So I'm excited for this opportunity to do something new. They think I'm really good at it, but I'm making up as I go. But don't tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> That's my COVID. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Noah Anderson, stop smiling so hard. I can't <laughs> help it, man. I'm just having a good time. I'm just here. I haven't seen everybody here in a while. I know. Go ahead, son. Um. So it's it's been interesting for me um, with my corona experience because right now I'm on my last semester of college. Right now I go to the University of North Carolina at Pembroke. I'm majoring in music industry. Um, and so it's been really interesting. Um, theater wise, I was supposed to be playing the role of Corey um, in Fences uh, here in the area. Uh, but due to coronavirus, there were complications with that. Um, and, so, and so it's kind of been for me, had been just just winging it out, trying to find a way uh, to be able to 
make it through, I guess, the semester, an awkward semester and a half of coronavirus and online learning and hybrid learning in person as well. Um, had been doing a lot of social justice recently as well. Um, a lot of things happening in a community that is also um, racially charged, there's a lot of racial injustice happening. Um, and so I've been doing a lot there, uh, been doing and active there. And other than that, um, like I said, just trying to finish up my my last semester uh, of college, and mm -hmm. then hopefully the Lord, you know, will guide my path to what I need to do, mm -hmm. what I need to do next. Um, but other than that, I'm just pretty much just trying to finish out and do well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. And now your mother, Tina Morris Anderson, meet Miss Melba Moore. Good evening. Uh, nice to meet you. Um, so, just what have you been doing since? Uh, COVID started theater wise. <laughs> so <laughs> let's see. Um, theater wise, so I was, hello everybody. First of all, I'm sorry I'm late. I had to, just left a rehearsal. Um, but I was scheduled to be a part of Theater Fest at NC State. And then they realized they were not going to be able to do that. So that was canceled. Um, was assistant directing for Fences, and then they realized that they weren't able to do that one. So since then, let's see, got to be a part of um, Josh's play that he wrote, Who's Zooming Who, for, um, I can forget the name of the theater right now, but so that was on, that was virtual. So we recorded that uh, for virtual purposes. What else have we done? So I am now in rehearsal for a, a play at Raleigh Little Theater. Um, it's actually a two part and it will actually be done live every time on online and it's called Waiting for the Host. Uh, and then there's a second part that's called Still Waiting. Uh, so we will open next week to do that. And so it's, you know, so I, I feel very fortunate that we were able to finish up our run of Bourbon at the Border before everything kicked in. So. I was kind of unfortunately carrying that character around with me uh, <laughs> until until this this piece with um, with RLT. So I think that's it. <laughs> okay, thank you, uh, everybody. Oh, who does she play in Pearly? Uh oh, who am I playing? Who are you playing in Pearly? I am playing Missy. That's what I'm playing. Lord, I'm playing Juan's wife. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> But <laughs> bless her Lord. <laughs> bless her Lord. Let's start praying now. Yeah, we're well, well, so the last husband now. Here we go. <laughs> now, ah, ah. Stop but, it. I'm gonna mute all y'all. Um I can I tell what I've been doing? Uh so nope. I've been I've been doing I've been doing uh some readings, uh Zoom readings. <clears throat> did something with Shonda this summer. Uh, did something with Dylan where I played a, um, a defendant. And of course I had to go to jail. I'm doing a Shakespeare reading this Saturday with, with the crew, half the crew here. Uh, I've constantly gotten on Aya's nerves, which is a full-time job in itself. <laughs> uh, and I've, uh, I'm a sound designer as well. Um, so I've done some sound design work. Um, and learned OBS and Twitch, which is not an easy thing, which is how they do Zoom shows uh, and stuff. And so that's basically what I have been doing myself. Um, but that's basically it. Um, we're gonna let we're gonna let Auntie M go early because um, y'all have worried her to death. <laughs> y'all. <laughs> Y'all just, oh, y'all getting on my nerve. Uh, Looks like you the one worried. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Plain auntie, English. Auntie, come on, Auntie. Sorry. Hey, Auntie, you know what? You fit right in. We are. I, you know what? I oh, no. I know, right? You fit right in. There. Sorry, you family now. You family. Uh, I want, I, Lauren, and I know I speak. For Lauren, and we want to thank you because the look of the faces, I got to go back and look at the recording. The look of the faces when you popped up was. Uh, was it a real surprise? Yes, 
Ma'am, there were only three people up here that knew. I'm thinking there were only three people that knew. Uh, and um, it was, yeah, it was everything that um, I hoped it would be. And I hope you guys can tell I'm, I'm having a good time. <laughs> well, well, okay. Well, well I enjoyed yes. enjoyed this. Really. Yes, we. You have given us information uh, this evening that uh, is going to carry us a long, long way. Um, and there's so much going on. I know we're just really so blessed to be in a place like this too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I will say that this is one of the positives of COVID because yeah. if there was COVID, we wouldn't. We probably wouldn't even have thought to do something like no, this. No, no, no. Um, and because you're you're on the West Coast, correct? No, I'm in New York City. Where are you at? Oh, you're in New York. Well, I thought you was on the West Coast. I thought she was on the West Coast. Bro. I just I love did Hollywood. Think... <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> I okay, thought you were so... on in Los Angeles. All right. Well, <laughs> no. Well, um, that's Black Girl Magic. Auntie, <laughs> there it is. Black Girl Magic. Auntie M, um, we want to make sure we're able to, and that's of course after we get off the uh, after we get off the uh, the air. We don't want everybody in the, our business. We want to make sure we can get in contact with you for you to come see us and 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 oh, everything. Sure. And sure. however we can do that, uh, you let us well, know. How, how did you get in touch with me? Did you get, get in touch with my uh, partner, Ron? Yes, Ron. Yeah. Yeah. Continue yeah. to do that through Ron. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, as long as Ron is okay, we don't want Ron. We don't want to email Ron. Ron be like, I'm sick of y'all. We don't want to talk to y'all no more. <laughs> well, no. excuse me. He is colored. <laughs> 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 so I ain't got no guarantees. But we love you. <laughs> he's gonna brush my hair right now. I'm gonna... You know, you know, what he's doing. He's combing his head. Remember when I told you she was down to earth, Lauren? Remember when I told you that? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. So Juan, uh, Juan, can I ask one question? Yes. Okay. Today would you <laughs> would you consider doing a versus battle? Did you see the versus battle? I, I'm asking mom if she saw the, uh, the versus battle with Patty LaBelle. I've heard about it. I have not seen it. Okay, you haven't seen it. Who would be her competition? Because she just held a note for 35 seconds. This is true. It's <laughs> a fact. Oh, is it a competition? Not exactly. <laughs> it's a friendly competition. It's like a friendly competition. So it was Patty LaBelle versus Gladys Knight. So it's like a friendly competition. Well, someone of your high. caliber, you, it would. I, I would know. Hope. I know. Who? Stephanie Mills. Oh, yes. Yes. We we'll have the, we'll have here the little first, people. Folks. You heard it here first. Yes, yes, yes. She don't did something. We need yes. to make that happen. That's a good yes. 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 Call Timberland. Call Timberland right now. Somebody, somebody tag Timberland. Somebody tag him right now. <laughs> Make that happen. Yes. Yes, we're going to do that. Yes. Well, my mom says she loves you, uh, uh, Auntie, Auntie M. Thank and, you. Um, Thank you. We, we definitely love you. And uh, you. we will be grinning about this forever. I think you just put put me in a, a, a new category. I think everybody up here likes me, at least for the next week. <laughs> <laughs> 48 hours. We'll give you 48 hours. Give it a couple. <laughs> no. Minutes. A whole week. Two hours and 45 hours. minutes. <laughs> uh, ooh. Well, thank you. And everyone that was watching, um, thank you for watching. And again, thank you, Auntie M, for sitting oh, up with you. us here these two hours and enlightening us on stuff even that I didn't know. Um, we will carry this with us, like I said, forever. And you have a wonderful evening. <laughs> Everybody, uh, have so much. Evening. When you guys get up and you do the production, remember, I, I really want to be there. Please let me know. Okay. Well, you know what? And let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. We're doing some master classes next month, mm -hmm. and they will be just like what we're doing now. I'll um, show you how to hold a note, babies. So you don't have a problem, oh, you, don't no. have a problem. you don't have a problem with, with maybe participating and coming on to some of the master classes if we give you the information? No, just call Ron. Okay. Uh, do that, we was have the, that was my first job. It was teaching. 
Oh, that's right. You did tell us that. You come through public school educators. Come through. All oh, right now. now. You know what I'm saying? There it is now. That is so. We would definitely, we'll email and contact. Yeah, you. please. Okay. All right. Give me, well, give me something to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we all, Auntie M, we all bored. We all Man, bored. Everybody needs something to do. <laughs> that, that's little bit. Yeah, everybody. Everybody needs a little something, something in their life. All right. Well, guys, thank you. Uh, thank good you. night. And y'all be be good. And you can't be good, be Bless good you. at it. <laughs> All right. Good night, Bless you. Stay well. Thank good you. Good night, everybody. I love y'all. Bye. 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 Bye.